Welcome and thank you for watching. This is Understanding Your Home Electric Water Heater, an updated version of a video series I originally released in 2019. In this video, we're going to explore the internals of the typical electric water heater. It might be in your home or even the one at the shop. And at the conclusion of this video, you'll not only know how it functions, but how to replace key parts to keep it operating. Okay, let's dig in. Here we have a typical home water heater. Two, in fact. The one on the right is from Rheem. The one on the left is from A.O. Smith, and there are other brands as well. These are 40-gallon units found in almost every three-bedroom, two-bath home in Florida. It's the standard, and you can pick one up at any of the big box stores. However, if it's just the two of you at home, a 40-gallon unit will do just fine. Even with a couple of kids, it's generally no problem, and these units do have a fast recovery time. Each manufacturer will have a slightly different exterior design, but internally, they're nearly identical. Inside, there is a steel or glass-coated holding tank surrounded with insulation and a metal exterior case. At the top are the input and output connections to the house. Cold water comes in and hot water goes out. There will almost always be a cutoff valve on the cold water input side. In this example, the hot and cold connections are marked by color. The third connection you see is the pressure release valve. It may be on the top or on the side of the tank, depending upon the manufacturer. Electrical power is connected within a built-in junction box. The typical connection will be on top, as seen here. On the front are two access panels. Inside are the thermostats and heating elements for the water heater. More about that in a moment. At the bottom of the tank will be a drain valve. The design of the valve will vary depending upon the manufacturer. Now let's go through how it operates. Water enters the heater from the cold water pipe from the house. Open the cutoff valve to ensure water flow. The valve may be a turn handle or a lever as seen here. In this example, the valve is open when it is in line with the delivery pipe. Cold water is delivered to the bottom of the water heater holding tank via an internal pipe. Within each access panel, a thermostat is mounted to the outside of the holding tank and an electrical heating element is inserted into the tank itself. The temperature of the water radiates into the wall of the holding tank. The thermostat senses the temperature and activates the heating elements to bring the water to the target temperature. The pressure release valve is an overheating safety valve. If something were to go wrong with the control system, it's possible the water in the tank could boil, creating pressure inside. The release valve is there to release that pressure and keep the tank from exploding. Not really a problem with today's technology, but a safety device just in case. When you open the hot water faucet in the house, the cold water pressure entering the water heater at the bottom of the tank pushes the hot water out through the connection at the top of the tank. This continues until the faucet is turned off. And even while the water is running, the thermostats are monitoring the temperature of the tank water and activating the heating elements as needed. However, that still won't keep the kids from using up all the hot water. Now, before leaving this section, let's talk about the drain valve at the bottom of the tank. It's there to allow you to drain the tank if needed. Turn off the incoming cold water. Connect a hose and open the valve. Then allow air into the tank to facilitate the draining process. Either lift the lever on the pressure release valve or open a hot water faucet. Either will work. It's recommended to drain the tank on a regular basis to flush out sediment, especially if you're on a well water system. No one I've ever talked to ever does that. But there you go. That's the recommendation. We've reached the point of discussing repairs that you can make yourself. However, if you've already decided that you're always going to call someone else to fix it, then I suggest skipping to the end where I have a shameless self-promotion of my books waiting for you. But if you'd like to know how to make these simple repairs, please continue on. Water heater is a simple device. There are no moving parts and it's mostly old school electrics, so there are only a couple of things that can go wrong with it. Problem scenario number one, the water heater is leaking water from the tank. The only solution here is to replace it. Not a difficult job. Easily done. More on the replacement process later. Problem scenario 2. The water heater is not making hot water. The likely cause is electrical. There are only two electrical components in the water heater, the thermostats and the heating elements. Determining which one is the problem is easy, but there is a process to follow. The tools you'll need are a screwdriver, adjustable pliers, a plumber's socket, and an electrical test meter. Step 1. Check the breaker panel for a tripped water heater breaker. If so, reset it. If it trips again, 
The problem is in the water heater, likely a heating element. Move the water heater breaker to the fully off position. Now this is important. Make sure power to the water heater is off. The bottom element is always activated first and remains on the longest. Because the bottom element performs the bulk of the work, if there is a problem, it's likely the cause. However, I'll take you through the entire diagnostic routine to make sure all the bases are covered. We need to check the thermal breaker on the upper thermostat first. It only takes a moment. Remove the top access cover plate. Then peel back the insulation. In the example here, I used a piece of duct tape to hold the insulation out of the way. Remove the plastic protective shield. It just lifts out. Now, before doing anything else, use your electric test meter and verify there is no electricity present on any of the screw heads on the thermostat. That's for your safety. I know you have the breaker off, but it's important to double check. Here we can see the thermostat and the heating element. This is the thermal reset button on the thermostat. The normal state is flat with the body of the thermostat. If it is extended out, then it has popped, meaning the water heater got too hot and a thermal breaker opened, cutting off the electricity. It's a safety precaution, and if this is the condition you find, you can depress the button to reset it and operate the water heater to see if it happens again. It might hold. If, however, the thermal breaker is okay, then we check the heating element. At this point, we can assume for the moment that the thermostats are working. The next step is to check the heating elements, and since the upper access panel is already open, we start there. Loosen the screws and remove both wires from the upper element. Set your test meter to 200 ohms resistance. Hold the meter probes against the screws of the element, one to each. A good functioning element will have a reading between 12 and 18 ohms. A defective element will read between 0 and 1. If the reading is within range, then reattach the wires, securing them tightly. Perform the same test on the bottom element, even if the upper element is defective. Both heating elements should be tested. Note, if both elements test good, the problem is one or both of the thermostats. No hot water means the heating elements are not working. The thermostats control the heating elements. So if the heating elements are good, then the thermostats are bad. Replacing these components is a simple task. You can find a water heater tune-up kit at any hardware or big box store. The kit contains upper and lower thermostats and two new heating elements for a 40-gallon, 240-volt, 4,500-watt water heater. The water heater brand is not important. You don't need a parts match. Only the voltage and wattage are important and must match the requirements on the specification plate of the water heater. First, close the cold water input valve then drain the water heater. Once the water level is below the target element, use the plumber's socket to unscrew the element from the tank. Pull the element out of the tank and discard. Place the gasket ring on the new element. Insert it into the tank, screw it in and tighten down. Reconnect the wires to the element. You're done. Close up the access panel. Next, close the drain valve and close the pressure release valve if you opened it. Open a hot water faucet to allow trapped air in the line to escape. Then open the cold water cutoff valve and refill the water heater. Take a note here, do not turn on the electricity until the tank is full. There should be warmish water in about 15 to 20 minutes and fully recharged in about 45 to 60. If the heating elements were the problem, you're finished. But if your testing showed the thermostats to be the problem, you need to swap them out. And in this case, you do not need to drain the water tank. Here are the replacements. The larger on the left is the upper thermostat. The smaller on the right is the bottom one. The temperature adjustment setting is here. You may change that if you like. But if you do, just remember, whatever temperature you change one must be matched by the other. Both upper and lower thermostats must be set to the same temperature. The back, flat, metal side goes against the tank wall of the water heater. This is where the thermostat senses the heat level of the tank itself, and therefore the water within. The thermostats are held in place with a spring clip, one at the bottom left and one right. There are no screws. Your model may have a plastic cover strap like the one shown here. If you can work around it, fine, but you can remove it without causing any harm. Use a pair of pliers to do so, and gain full access to the thermostat. 
disconnect and label each wire from the thermostat. Once the wires are removed, gently pull forward on the spring clips while sliding the thermostat upwards. It will slide out of place. Insert the new thermostat by placing it against the tank wall and sliding it downward, slipping it into the clips. Following your labels, reattach the electrical wires. Replace both upper and lower thermostats. Close up the access panels and you're done. Once you restore electrical power, you'll have warmish water in 15 to 20 minutes and fully recharged in about 45 to 60. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you again for watching. I do appreciate it. Now, as promised earlier, a bit of self-promotion. I have a book series that you might enjoy about the William Johnson family. Who is William Johnson, you ask? Well, that is to be discovered in the first book, titled, What Did You Do in the War? It involves an alien invasion, sacrifice, and a rather innocent private William Johnson who is thrown into the conflict to emerge, the hero of the world. Told in his own words, it's an event that years later still invades his dreams and affects his daily life. That's followed by, Come With Me If You Want to Live, Tim Anderson, William Johnson's grandson, who arrives home one day to discover his parents are missing. In the course of solving that puzzle, he uncovers a secret invention of his grandfather's, one that could be used for good or be misused to enslave the world. The government is after it and will do anything to get it as Tim and company fight to keep it hidden. Black Hole Theory comes next. Tim and his best friend Peter become the apprentice of William Johnson, who secretly uses his inventions to boost their knowledge while tasking them to develop a new power source, one that could change the fortunes of the rich, a change the rich do not want and want to stop. Retribution swings back to William Johnson and his long-delayed plan for retribution against government and corporate organizations. They have controlled him for years through threats against his family. But enough is enough. The seed of change has been planted, and he does all he can to fertilize its growth. Change is coming, but not without consequences for everyone. The finale in the series is titled Discovery. The alien war ended so many years ago. Its impacts have faded, and few remember it. But that is about to change with a discovery by an orbital deployment crew. It's the flip side of the coin, answering the who, what, when, where, and why of an old invasion. Loyalties are called into question as discussions are had to hide it from the people. And a final plug, a three-story short story collection called Life's Journey. It's a journey through life as we know it and live it, with all of the sadness and happiness and soul-searching that happens in our daily lives. The first story is called Rhapsody, the second one is called Incident at the Copa, and the third story is called Life's Journey. Each different, each interesting, and each makes you think a little bit. Available in softcover, ebook, and audiobook. Find them under my name, R.E. Link. Now, this really is the end, and I thank you again.